On the road, the Tour de France is cycling's most significant race. Away from the race itself, those three weeks in July also serve as another crucial rendezvous in the guise of cycling's unofficial transfer window, with August the 1st the date which teams can announce comings and goings for the next season. As InCycle found out when it investigated back in 2017, for team managers, the tour is often dominated by meetings and tense negotiations. There are lots of conversations happen now, so rider agents come and they talk to the teams and ask which, you know, which kind of type riders you're looking for, climbers or GC contenders or sprinters or whatever. Yeah, it's a busy time of the year. Like for the rest day for me yesterday was, I had meetings from like literally eight in the morning till close to midnight. So it's a busy time. But just who exactly are the team managers meeting with? The vast majority of rider agents working in cycling are not well-known names or faces, their low public profile sometimes being a deliberate move. One of the best known, though, is Dries Smets. The Belgian represents some of the biggest names in the sport, including Michael Matthews and Greg Van Avermaet. With over 60 riders on his books, the tour is Smets' most important work trip of the year. In cycling, you can only uh, negotiate contracts for riders who are at the end of their contract in the current year. Uh, so we do not go and sell riders that still have a year contract or even more left with their, uh, with their current team. Uh, that's different to other sports such as football, for example, where you can really do transfers being in a contract. That's not the case in cycling. So at the beginning of the year, we know which of our riders are uh, at the end of their contracts uh, with their team. Um, then we talk with them and we see, are they happy on their current team or would they rather go and look elsewhere and then see which teams they would be interested in. And then our job is to go and talk with those team managers and obviously also see if there's an interest from their side because it needs to be a mutual uh, interest uh, in order to be able to conclude a contract. And so basically we explain to the team manager of, the, of those teams um, what the position of the rider is. Um, also sometimes, you know, if things go well, you can talk about the good results, but sometimes riders have had some difficult times and then you can explain why. Despite the agents being the gatekeepers to the riders, team managers know they can serve a useful purpose in the rider-team relationship. It's not to say that I've never gotten into it with an agent. I mean, clearly I have. I mean, you develop an emotional connection with the riders on the race and training them and coaching them and, you know, so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden you get to the to discussing money and that emotional connection can really erode. Um, having an intermediary where you can just negotiate on a business level and not on a, on a, you know, a friendship, coaching, whatever level is, I think, really helpful. In cycling, I think we all try to respect the rules and uh, team managers also, they respect the rules on, in that matter. So it's a very, I, I think it's a very um, correct business we, we, we do, as opposed to sometimes in the stories you hear from other sports. It's a very controlled market. You've got 18 World Tour teams, you've got around 18 or 20 pro continental teams, and that's it, that's the whole market. So uh, in football, you've got thousands of, of uh, football teams all around the world, so it's very less control. We also take care of their taxes, um, insurances, uh, administration problems, residency issues, uh, which, which uh, is uh, becoming more and more an issue for a lot of guys, for Australians, for Americans coming over to Europe, getting a visa uh, done for them. So we really try to give them a full service package, uh, not just only negotiating their team contract and then you know, bye bye and see you again in, in two years time when your contract runs out, but really being there on, on a daily basis for them, for any problem they might have linked to their profession. Without the face-to-face -face meetings at the tour and the potential damage to team finances caused by the global situation, 2020 looks certain to be a very different year in the rider transfer market.